Hi guys, Harry here, welcome to Scrap Science. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really simple test coil. So I've just put together this slower exciter circuit on my breadboard here using this schematic. It's probably one of the simplest low power test coil circuits that you can make. So let's connect that up to my 12 volt battery and bring close something that will react to the high frequency electromagnetic waves. This fluorescent bulb lights up pretty well. It'll also work with these little neon bulbs. It's not as impressive but it still lights up wirelessly. Anyway, I'll show you how to build one of these and a slightly improved version that I've come up with. So the things that you're going to need for this circuit are this breadboard or something to put the circuit together with. I guess you could solder the wires as well but I find a breadboard a lot easier. You need a power source, preferably somewhere from 9 to 12 volts. A 9 volt battery does work pretty well for small ones, but a 12 volt battery works pretty well. If you've got a power supply, that works even better. You're also going to need a BJT transistor. The bigger the better. It's going to handle a lot of current. You need some wire to put it all together with, an LED, and a resistor within the range of 20 kiloohms to 100 kiloohms. Doesn't really matter, it's just sending a signal through it, pull up resistor. Uh, you're going to need a primary coil, yes, I've just got a roll of cardboard and then wrapped silver copper wire around it ten times. You can use any wire for this, doesn't really matter, just make sure it doesn't overlap and touch at any points. You're also going to need a secondary coil, this is probably the hardest bit to make, just with magnet wire or glazed copper wire around a PVC pipe 100 to 2000 times, depending on how tall you want to make the tower. Uh, just make sure when you're wrapping it around the PVC pipe, don't let it overlap in any places because then it'll arc back to itself as the voltage steps up. Alright, let's put the circuit together. So I've just finished putting the circuit together, got these wires ready to go off to my primary, each end, and then one end of my secondary with a wire to plug into the breadboard, and the other end generating the high frequency electromagnetic waves. So what you're going to do now is we're going to feed this wire through the cardboard of the primary and stick the primary over the secondary like that. Now we've got the tower ready, connecting up. Plug in this wire to the base of the transistor because this will be our feedback. I'll explain that later. And then if you've got some alligator clips you can connect these wires onto the primary. Alright, I'll connect 12 volts up with some more alligator clips. And we'll see if that LED turns on when we turn it on. You've got a working circuit. So now it's not turning on now, so that means I've got the primary hooked up the wrong way. So I'll just switch those wires over. Alright, so now connect up the battery again. And we should get that LED turning on like that when we connect the wires. So let's turn that on now. And bring fluorescent light close. There we are. Turns on. Alright, let's have a look at the circuit and see if we can figure out how it works. So we've got 12 volts here, that's going to go up and round to the primary coil. Now initially that's going to want to conduct a lot of current because there's virtually no resistance, but only if this transistor allows for current to flow between the collector and the emitter. Initially it will because we've got this 100 kilo ohm resistor between 12 volts and the base, so a small current will flow through the base to the emitter, allowing for a much larger current through the collector and the emitter. 
So when that current flows through the primary, we're going to get quite a large voltage on the secondary, kind of like how a transformer works. This end of the secondary is going to want to uh, lower in voltage, and this end is going to want to go higher. When this bit lowers, because we've got this feedback wire going back to here, it's going to shut off the transistor, it's going to go back to a bit below zero volts, and then the transistor will stop conducting current through the primary, and then we'll start all over again because once this returns to zero volts, we're going to get current going through here again because the feedback is no longer negative and we can get current through the 100 kiloohm resistor back through the base and the emitter. The LED here is just to stop the feedback from going too far below zero volts because the standard voltage drop is 2.1 so this point on the circuit where the base is should only reach negative 2.1 volts. So seeing as we've got this feedback wire we're going to get a continual loop of current passing through here and then not passing through here over and over again. And that's going to match the resonance frequency of this coil and the stray capacitance that it's got with ground. And that's going to create very high frequency electromagnetic magnetic waves that can light up something like this fluorescent bulb. Now the main problem with the circuit is to do with the transistor that we're using, the BJT that we've got here because we can't actually put them in parallel to allow more current to flow through the primary and typically you can't really get too much current with them so what I'm going to do is replace them, modify the circuit a little bit with a MOSFET which we can put in parallel I've got eight of them in fact that I can put in the circuit hopefully we'll get some bigger arcs and more current through the primary here's the circuit I've come up with for the MOSFET so now we'll be able to put multiple MOSFETs in parallel and allow for more current the only real difference is I've put in these two LEDs because now that there's no current flowing from the gate to the source we're going to have to stop the voltage on the gate from going above 12 volts so these two LEDs here should stop it from going anywhere above around 16 volts. I do know that this works, it's not going to be like last video. Alright, once again let's put the circuit together. So I've just finished putting together the circuit, changed it up a bit, instead of using eight of these MOSFETs in parallel I've just used two, see there, just seems to give the circuit a longer range, coil can get wireless power to the fluorescent light at a further distance. I've also changed up the secondary winding, so you had that shorter one over there, this one's a bit bigger, I've used a much thinner wire so I can get far more turns on the way up. I've also got little aluminium foil ball to increase the capacitance between the top of the coil and ground down here on the circuit. Another thing I've done is changed up the number of coils in the primary. Uh, 10 didn't seem to work very well so I've changed it down to 6 and that seems to work a fair bit better. So let's turn it on for you. And we'll grab a fluorescent light. You can already see the distance that we can get away before it cuts out is a lot further than before. If we actually connect it up you can see it lights up a lot brighter. Neon bulb also works as well. And if you've got a standard discharge tube thing like this we can actually capture a bit of plasma. I don't know if you can see that very well. And finally, with test coils as powerful as this one, you can actually start to get little arcs of electricity coming off it when you bring a wire close, which I reckon is a lot cooler than just the wireless power that you can get off a Slayer Exciter circuit. So feel free to use the circuit if you want to build one for yourself. It's just as simple as a Slayer Exciter circuit. If you've got MOSFETs on hand and a couple of LEDs, I think it's a whole lot more impressive with a longer range and you're actually able to strike plasma arc.